Welcome back, thank you for joining me. If you're new here, I'm Lucy Roberts, sports therapist, personal trainer and nutritionist. Today we are going to talk about carbohydrate confusion. We're going to look at what carbohydrate foods do to you, what kinds of foods carbohydrates are, are they good for you, are they bad for you, the different types of carbohydrates, they're simple and complex carbohydrates, should you give up carbohydrates to lose weight and actually what effect carbohydrates have in your body and how you feel. So first off let's look at what a carbohydrate does and the role it has in the body. A carbohydrate food is your body's preferred source of fuel and carbohydrates are the main energy source that your body will go to in order to think in your mind and to operate and use energy in your body. Your body will store carbohydrates in the muscle tissue. It will also store it in the liver as an emergency source of energy and the rest of it, it will burn as you take it in. And fun fact is that the brain cannot store any energy in it so it, and it only runs off carbohydrates. So if you are depleted in carbohydrates or the body doesn't have a way of finding carbohydrates, you will get brain fog, tiredness and you won't be able to focus very well. That's why we say to people, are you hangry? when they're hungry because their mood changes, they get a bit irritable. Basically, it's because the brain is starved of carbohydrate or that source of energy, and you're having a lot of difficulty focusing, which interrupts your mood and makes you a bit irritated and angry. There are two primary different sources of carbohydrates. There's what we call a simple carbohydrate and a complex carbohydrate. Um, the body will utilize a simple carbohydrate first because it's the easiest carbohydrate fuel for it to access. And simple carbohydrates are typically things, foods that are converted into sugar the quickest. So obviously sugar, that's a direct um, fuel for the body and it can access that super, super quickly. Um, there's all sorts of sugar uh, types of food. There's sugar itself, there's corn syrup, there's maple syrup, there's honey, and there are all highly, highly ultra processed foods um, like white flour, white rice, um, and grains that have had all the, the wholeness taken off them. They've been stripped from all their natural sort of roughage and they are taken back to a very, very simple form and the body can turn those foods into sugar very, very quickly. The second type of carbohydrate is what's called a complex carbohydrate. And a complex carbohydrate has a longer chain molecule, which means that there is more roughage and more of the natural state wholeness within that food. Um, sugar typically doesn't have it or can't have anything like that because it's in such a pure state. So when we're looking at complex carbohydrates, we're looking at whole meal, flour, we're looking at whole grain, bread, we're looking at seeds, um, which give that roughage to um, a loaf of bread. We're looking at brown rice, not white rice. We're looking at um, vegetables. Vegetables all contain an amount of carbohydrate within them. And, but because of all the fiber and the nutrient richness of a vegetable, they are considered to be complex carbohydrates, which go into your bloodstream and provide the body fuel at a much more steady, slower rate. Apart from the root vegetables, which are white potatoes and parsnips. These are more of a simple carbohydrate. They're not as bad as sugar, but they will be processed much, much quicker. They aren't quite as dense in nutrient value with vitamins and minerals, and they're very starchy. And the starch within them, uh, and the bulk of it, means that that makes them very, very easy to be turned into sugar. The other types of complex carbohydrates which are really, really good and very slow releasing are beans and lentils, all sorts of pulses. So these are incredibly good. Um, typically beans, because of the high fiber within them, mean they're fantastic for your gut health as well. They're like a Brillo pad, just working their way through the colon, cleaning it and keeping it healthy. So looking at the two different types, we've got simple and complex carbohydrates. The main difference is that the simple carbohydrates are, are directly go into your bloodstream as a sugar source. The body can utilize that energy very, very fast, very, very quickly. 
and the complex uh, carbohydrates are the whole grain uh, packed full of nutrient and dense fiber types of food. So when we consume carbohydrates, the body breaks down those foods and turns it into glucose, which is a simple sugar that serves as the primary food source that enters your bloodstream and your cells. The body will utilize that, that carbohydrate, that glucose, very, very quickly. And it will store some of that glucose in the muscles, as I've said before, and in the liver for emergency use um, at a later date if you become very depleted in energy. Um, excess simple and the, the excess glucose will be literally excess and what the body typically does is it will boost it into the basement and that basement is your fat cells so there is only a certain amount of carbohydrate slash glucose that the body will utilize and use on immediate level and be storing for a later date to keep you going everything else is surplus so the more carbohydrate you eat, the more the body has excess and the more the body is gonna store it as fat. And in many, many years we have considered or the diet, dietary bodies have considered the fact that fat is so, so bad for us, but in actual fat, it's not fats that are that bad for us. It is the sugar and the carbohydrate content and the levels of carbohydrate that we eat in a, in a Western world that makes them highly addictive and it means that we're just not using the energy. We are slow sedentary people. There's only a certain amount of energy your body can use and expel at any one time. And we have an abundance and an excess that we eat all the time, which means that we are always, normally, unless we're very careful, storing these sugars in our fat cells um, for a later date. The body's mechanism on its survival says store, 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 because we are inherently designed through history and biologically to be able to store energy and fat for at a later date when there's a shortage of food. But of course, nowadays, there's never a shortage of food. So our bodies literally just keep storing it. So the brain, we've talked about the brain briefly. The brain literally functions on glucose and carbohydrate, and it is the only organ in the body which does not have the capability of storing some amount of this energy. So to stay alert and to stay responsive, we need to have a certain level of fuel, of carbohydrate in our systems. Now this doesn't mean that, oh, a keto diet is bad for us, when the body goes into a different state, which is called ketosis, literally our bodies will then be storing a lot more of its sugars through complex carbohydrates, which we eat through vegetables rather than simple carbohydrates, and they, it will store it and utilize it in a much slower rate. So it doesn't mean it's bad and it doesn't mean it's best, it just means it's a different way that the body will operate. So our bodies need carbohydrates. The bottom line is, is that to, to fuel ourselves, we need this um, carbohydrate. Um, but we can survive very, very well on complex carbohydrates because our bodies break it down very, very slowly, which means we get a very slow release of this energy. The problem with simple carbohydrates is it, it directly affects our hormone levels in the body. And our hormone levels, like dopamine and insulin, cause quite severe reactions. So if we have an overload of simple carbohydrates, we go and eat a great big pasta dish, a white rice dish, um, sugar, sugary treats, pizza, chocolate, biscuits, all these things, that the insulin in our bodies is goes, whoa, we've got too much, we've got too much, we need to slow it down, we need to slow it down. And the body's insulin careers upwards to try and stop the sugar rush and to slam us back down again. So initially, we get this real high, we get the dopamine effect, we get the sugar rush, which we go, yeah, I feel so happy now, and that's better. But then ultimately, very quickly afterwards, the insulin levels rise to, to stop that from happening because it's essentially the blood sugar is getting too sugary and too acidic, and the insulin forces this back down again, which means we get a slump and we become very, very tired. And this fluctuation, this extreme fluctuation of hormones actually has a very, very bad effect on our bodies and our health. And it will cause our bodies to store fat more. 
the body gets very confused, our guts get very, very depleted in nutrient value, the, the insulin and the hormones are disrupting of all of this fuel system and our guts, and this is when we can often um, be troubled with IBS, just an unsettled bowel, so that we get flatulence and we just end up getting very bloated with certain types of food because ultimately our guts are working too hard to try and process all this and as we get older uh, they start to fail and the nutrient value that our guts are getting depletes and the, um, the health of our gut depletes which means that it becomes inefficient at actually giving us what we need. Exercise is a great way of being able to, to help your body cope with um, carbohydrates and fluctuations. And exercise in its own way will help to monitor and to, to regulate your hormone levels and it will make your body work more efficiently and utilize carbohydrates in a better way. So this is why the combination of a good diet and exercise is so, so, so valuable for your health. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, do I need to give up carbohydrates to lose weight? And the answer, the broad general answer to that is no, you must never ever give up carbohydrates. But to lose weight and to become healthier and help your system overall, we always recommend cutting out as much simple carbohydrate as you can, because it's literally like putting petrol on a fire intermittently where it goes burns all that fuel in the fire and then ugh, dies down and then the fire starts to die and you go throw more fuel on the uh, petrol on the fire it comes up again and then it dies down again and this is how your bodies are going to be moving and your body will not operate and function correctly and allow you to lose weight and to be healthy in this circumstance so the big thing is about carbohydrates is though you can a keto diet in my opinion is not bad for you the only problem with the keto diet is the fact that it's very difficult to stick to a keto diet, essentially a good quality keto diet, is where you up your protein levels and you eat just vegetables and a certain amount of fruits, um, a minimal amount of fruits and nuts every day and you completely cut out all grains and simple carbohydrates or even complex carbohydrates which are of the grain uh, family, so like brown rice and brown bread um, and you literally just stick to vegetables and predominantly not root vegetables, only vegetables which, which grow above the ground. And because all vegetables have carbohydrate content and your body will actually nourish itself slowly and break those foods down slowly, you will, after a time, get a very nice consistent energy level every day. But this is very constricting and my advice to people most of the time is to just cut out everything that's ultra processed and white and uh, simple. So it's cutting out sugars, it's cutting out um, white refined flours and anything made with white refined flours like biscuits and crackers, white bread, um, pastries, buns, all the nice things that we like. Um, but if you are happy to go whole grain and eat brown rice and quinoa and whole grain uh, breads that are really good quality whole grain breads, you're doing yourself a massive favor. It means your energy levels and your hormones are gonna be more regulated, which is going to do massive favors for your health and your body and your weight. There you have it. That is the difference between carbohydrates. I hope this has debunked some carbohydrate confusion for you. Um, and you are now inspired to go and eat healthier and uh, look after your body better. If you've liked this information, if you uh, think it's been good and uh, you like the channel, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us enormously. We're very new uh, onto YouTube and we want to get into a, in front of as big an audience as we possibly can, which means that if you subscribe and you like this video, YouTube will say, hey, they're okay, and they'll put us into a, in front of a bigger audience. So that would be really, really appreciated. Uh, there's some link, helpful links below there's a, a helpful link below to my hot lemon Sunday newsletter it's free to subscribe um, every Sunday I send out a newsletter with helpful tips 
all sorts of ideas, things, hacks you can do for a healthier life, to cut down time and, and a little bit of education which just makes you think a bit more about what's good for you and what's not good for you. So please, please, please um, subscribe to that. It doesn't cost you anything unless you want to donate, um, but it's great information anyway. Uh, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.